morning. You know there's a focus on gun control. You know that Governor Cuomo is out front saying what he wants to do. What does the governor of New Jersey want to do in New Jersey, and what does he want the country to do? Well, in New Jersey, first off, we have the second toughest gun laws in America is already. That well, I think we have to have a conversation about it. But I think if all we talk about is just controlling guns, which we should talk about, um, we're not doing enough. You know, you look at what happened in Connecticut. Um, that young man was obviously mentally ill, and he needed to be getting treatment. And I think there's such a stigma uh, about mental illness and mental illness treatment in our country because we don't talk about it. And people, if that young man had cancer, his parents would have been reluctant to take him to the doctor to be treated. It's an illness just like anything else. Um, we also need to talk about substance abuse and how that contributes to violence. We had a woman in Camden who decapitated her infant child and then killed herself high on crack. That's why in New Jersey, what we've done, Charlie, is mandatory drug treatment. First-time drug offenders, yeah. we don't sentence you to prison. We sentence you to one year of inpatient drug treatment facility. That was my program last summer that we signed in. Last I've got to talk about violence in these video games. I have four kids at home. I don't allow Call of Duty or these other games in. And we've got to start talking about that as parents. So talk about all of it. I think we need to talk about all of it, and I think we need to do things in all four of those categories. You say talk about it, but why didn't you mention it in your address last night? Because, you know, you pick what you want to talk about. And after we've been through Hurricane Sandy, I thought that that should really be the focus of what we discussed yesterday as a state, where we've been and where we're headed to get everybody back on track. So we're going to have plenty of time to talk about that stuff as we move forward through the legislative year. And I'll be a full participant in the conversation, but you half an hour address, you pick and choose what you're going to talk about. Let's Go talk about yeah, Jane indeed. Sandy, because you uh, really spanked the Republicans in Congress and said it was disgraceful that they didn't pass the whole relief bill. There are some Republicans who said you went a little bit overboard criticizing fellow Republicans. Was that the right thing to do? Listen, Sandy is and was above politics and should be. And if my party's not putting it above politics, then they're going to hear from me about it. I mean, the fact is, my job is to be governor of New Jersey. And I think people have seen that over time, whether it's working with the president, if it means criticizing my own party, my job is to be governor and advocate for my The constituents. question is, did you achieve the results you hoped you would achieve? And do you have the House Speaker now saying, I hear you, Governor, and this is what I'm going to do about Sandy and funds coming to New Jersey? I think more broadly even, Charlie, I think we have the whole House of Representatives listening to us now. And you're going to need Republicans and Democrats to pass significant aid bills. And what we tried to do was talk to both sides of the aisle. But in the end, the decision that I criticized was one that the Speaker made. And I made it clear to him, and I also told him that in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Were you worried that you might do yourself um, no favors within the Republican Party? I don't worry about that. I, listen, I believe that what the American people want, what the people of New Jersey want, is people who come into office and do their jobs. And, and if you try to calculate every one of these moves politically, you're not doing your job, and you're not going to be an effective politician anyway. If you're doing your job, that's the best way to get this done. You are now saying that New Jersey is the model for reconciliation, compromise, and bipartisanship. Yes, sir. And you're what? You're inviting the congressional leaders in Washington to come to New Jersey for a seminar? I'm, I'm happy for them to come anytime <laughs> they want. And look at what we've done for three years, Charlie, with a Democratic legislature, significant majorities in those legislatures, passed every one of those initiatives in a bipartisan way. But it's interesting because a lot of what you recommend sounds like what has been part of the Democratic message. I mean, you're asking for spending some money. You're asking, you're set saying to people, I'll raise taxes if necessary for the people of New Jersey. Well, listen, I've also vetoed three income tax increases. Um, we are spending less in the state budget today than John Corzine spent in 2008. Um, we have passed a number of very conservative measures in our state um, that I've gotten Democrats to go along with as well. But the idea of divided government is that you're not going to get everything you want. And so, yeah, I have to compromise on certain things, but raising taxes hasn't been one of them, Charlie. We haven't raised taxes But you in said Jersey. you would if necessary. Listen, what I've said is I will always listen. But, you know, that's the art of compromises. You've got to be willing to listen, but then you yeah. stand for your principles. And a Republican like you win the Republican presidential nomination. Can you have the views you have and win the nomination? I think that if you have views where you're being effective and you're getting things done for the people, mm -hmm. then any of anybody, not just me, but anybody who does that can win. And here's what I think. I think what's going to happen in the future is the governors, 30 Republican governors out of 50 now, mm -hmm. they're going to be the ones who are going to be dictating what the what the agenda in our party is because we're actually getting things done. You've got a re-election coming up. Yes, Did sir. Did you scare 
the mayor of New Jersey, Cory Booker, out of the race? No. <laughs> I think well, let's look into the Senate, not to the yeah, governor's race. You've got 73 percent popularity coming out of all the things following Sandy. No, listen, I think that Cory made the decision that he could best serve the people of this state in New Jersey running for the United States Senate. That was his call, his choice. Um, he's a friend. As you do you agree with um, him? Uh, do I agree with him? You know, we'll have to see who the other candidates are at the time, Charlie. Well, listen, Corey's been a friend, and we've worked well together over time. And, I, and I'm glad from this perspective. My daughter follows Corey on Twitter, and she said to me, you need to tell Mr. Booker that if he runs against you, I'm unfollowing him. So I'm glad that Sarah doesn't have to unfollow Corey on Twitter. Yes, yeah, so you know, she doesn't have to do that. I'm really glad that she doesn't have to do that. Governor Christie, thank you. Very Charlie Nora, thank you very much Great for having to see me. You. And this morning, the head of the U.S. Anti-Doping